Hello everyone, this is Boricua Binks and welcome back to Let's Play Seduce Me. In the last episode, we got Suzu's ending and it was pretty good. I, th I actually think I preferred it compared to the one with James, even though James is bae. Suzu's awesome and uh, it just felt more real. I don't know, I mean some, some of it was kind of sh- mm, But uh, I think storyline and writing wise, I think it was better. So yeah. Now we are on a new path. This one is with the other handsome fellow who appears later in the game, Andrew. So in the beginning, it doesn't matter what I chose, I think. Um, but it matters from here on out. So here we are. We're at the party and we've just been introduced to him. All right. This Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. Okay. So this time I'll be nice. All right. He kissed it. I'm honored to be invited here. He's so cute. I mean, I I hope that they have a really nice ending too, because I feel like they're going to have a more realistic relationship than she would have with the Incubi. So, yeah, I, I honestly, if if this was me in her position and everything, I just feel like Andrew would be the best choice. Out of the Incubi, I prefer James, but out of all of them overall, I think Andrew just makes the most sense. He could be the CEO, she could be, you know, um, having some input in the company, and they would be a really cute couple, and he's a cute guy, and he pisses off her dad, so that's even better. <laughs> but mom approves, so that works. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, we saw this. So, um, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. So adorable. Um, okay. We saw this. So this is where we're going to do something different. We're going to go after him. I quickly followed Andrew, wanting to be sure he was alright. I felt a little embarrassed that my dad put him on the spot like that. I had to apologize. Yeah, I feel bad for him. The dad is such a douche, man. <laughs> okay. This is new. Alrighty. Nice. Looks really nice at night time. We wound up outside. The stars practically danced on the grass as we stood in the backyard of the mansion. It had been my first time in years being out there, but my thoughts weren't on the nostalgia. Hey, Andrew? Andrew turned to me in surprise. However, his face was completely red in both embarrassment and humiliation. I felt terrible. Oh, I, um, I didn't see you or hear you following. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. My dad's a douche. No, no, it's fine. I should be the one to apologize. What for? You didn't do anything wrong. I mean, for the way my dad behaved. He shouldn't have been so... Oh, no. No, it's fine. I mean, I should have expected it and been more prepared. <laughs> Aww. Andrew rubbed the back of his neck and gave a goofy grin. It was intriguing, seeing Andrew's professional side, and then seeing a goofy smile away from everyone. He's cute! You're my type, dude! He's totally my type! Still, I'm sorry for that. It's not a problem, really, but thank you. We both smiled at each other before I reached my hand out to him. He tilted his head and raised an eyebrow in confusion. Mika. My name is Mika. Aww, he's cute. I like you. Okay. <laughs> In understanding, his smile returned before he took my hand gently and shook it. That's a pretty name. I'm happy to know it now. Nah, it's not that nice. I have to disagree with you. It's much better than Andrew. I mean, who names their kid Andrew? Hey, there's nothing wrong with that name, okay? <laughs> I happen to have had a crush on a guy named Andrew once, so yeah. <laughs> don't don't hate on your name. A lot of people do. But how about Axel or Ace? Something cool like that. Dude, I mean, yeah, the name Ace, I'm kind of partial towards it because of One Piece, but really? Axel? <laughs> what? I couldn't help but laugh at him. He was pretty chill for a guy who was supposed to be a vice chairman's son. He grinned and laughed along with me. Oh, they're so cute, and they're probably close in age. I don't know why, but I felt warm. Whether it was the almost non-existent breeze or the situation we found ourselves in, it felt nice. 
Lewis. Ugh. Go away, father. Dang it. And just like that, the feeling had vanished. We both turned to see my dad in the doors of the mansion, staring at Andrew with almost a deadly glare. Andrew straightened up, trying to maintain a business posture. Yes, sir? Your limo is in the front. The driver has requested that you return home. Now. Oh, all right. Thank you, sir. Andrew quickly nodded to me before speeding back into the mansion to leave. As I took a step to follow, my dad stepped in front of me. Dad? I don't want to hear it. Do not become friendly with him. He wants to take the company away from us. You have no reason to be friends with him. Mm-mm. Before I could retort, my dad turned away and walked back inside, muttering about how the party was nearing an end. I sighed and entered the house as well, wanting for the party to end immediately. Eventually, only Suzu, Naomi, my parents, and Incubi... Okay, the same. Um, get out of my house. Uh, wait, what? Duck. <laughs> ah, I, I freaked out. <laughs> um, alrighty then. I hate when I see the timer, I just, I just freak out for some reason. <laughs> Explore the house again. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's always good for her to learn about the magic and all that. Uh, don't disturb them. Don't care. We'll have pizza again. Uh, okay, we're gonna be distant towards them again. <sighs> okay, so based on this, I think staying in my room doesn't accomplish anything. Arcade is for Suzu. Pink Lady is for Naomi, so for him, maybe it's the grandfather's grave? Well, let's try. It was Sunday, and I felt the need to see my grandfather. It had been three days since he had been buried, and the cemetery was only a short walk away. I decided to see him. I hope I didn't just screw up Andrew's route. I don't know. I took my time eating and headed out to the street to walk towards the cemetery. It was a good half-hour walk, but it would be a nice stroll. A flower shop was on the way, so I could pick up flowers for his grave. I still felt the sting of grief run through my bones, but I knew that it would eventually fade over time. I paused my journey to the cemetery to enter the flower shop, quickly picking a bouquet from the back display case and paying. The bouquet of lilies, please. Thank you. With flowers in hand, I made my way to the large steel gates of St. Joseph's Cemetery. I entered and felt the cold shiver of death run through the air against my skin. Would it always be like this? The cemetery was a final resting place. It wasn't just for mourning or sadness. It was supposed to also be a place for remembrance. I sighed as I walked through the cemetery towards my grandfather's grave. Before I could reach it, though, I noticed the figure standing by the slab. Oh, is it him? Huh? Who's that? I stopped walking and tried to focus my sight to see who was standing at my grandfather's grave before I approached. I didn't want to interrupt her prayer or anything, but even more, I wanted to know who exactly was there. My mind barely considered the idea that it was my father, but it couldn't have been him. Familiar brown hair crowned this person's head instead of the black and gray my father had. He was vaguely familiar. Andrew? Yes, I made the right choice. Aw, that's so nice. That means he really did care about her grandpa. That's adorable. It was indeed Andrew. He was dressed in casual clothes, but he was giving his respects to my grandfather. I was curious as to why. I quietly stepped closer and approached Andrew in the grave, being careful to not scare Andrew. At my footsteps, Andrew turned to see me, and realizing it was me, turned fully to me. Oh, Miss Anderson. I, uh, I'm sorry. I'll just... Andrew quickly shook his head and took a step to leave. You're fine, Andrew. Why would I, why would I tell him to leave? <laughs> Seriously. 
I stopped him with a hand and smiled. He was merely paying his respects. There was no need for me to intrude. Andrew stared at me before smiling and nodding, returning to his place in front of the grave. He took a side step to make room for me, so I stepped next to him. I looked to the grave, running my gaze through the engraving in the stone slab, before gently laying my bouquet down by it. However, I didn't stand back up. I gently sat down in the grass in front of the grave and stared at it. Lilies? Common flowers for gravestones, yeah. My grandfather didn't have a favorite flower. I heard and felt Andrew gently crouch down and sit beside me. I turned my head to look at him, catching him nodding in an acknowledgment to my statement. I turned back to the grave, letting out a sigh. <sighs> so, can I ask why you came here? I came to pay my respects. He was someone I really idolized. I turned my head to him again, confused. Idolized? Mm-hmm. He inspired me to work hard and make people happy. When I interned for his company, he was the first person to greet me at the doors with open arms, even before my father. I almost couldn't believe what I was hearing. However, the look in Andrew's eyes made my heart break. He truly idolized my grandfather like he was his own grandfather. Your grandfather was an amazing man, but I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. He treated me better than my dad ever could. All my dad cares about is me becoming the CEO. But Harold Anderson? No. I could practically feel my lips move in sync with Andrew's as he continued to speak, almost hearing my grandfather speak alongside him in the air. He said, don't worry about it so much. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy instead. Aww. He said that to me, too. Andrew turned to me in surprise before smiling. Really? He cared a lot about you. There were days that he wouldn't stop talking about you and compared you to me. Hm. I felt a blush run across my face. What things did he say? Well, he told me how cute you were and how you loved to make people happy. He also said you always had the perfect ideas for his toys. <laughs> Her grandpa was totally shipping them. Come on, this is the perfect pairing. I felt a smile grow on my face, remembering the small moment when I had helped him design his now most popular toy, the glowing heart bear. I didn't realize how proud of me he was because I was so small, but now that I was older, I was able to understand. He always had me help him, even when I didn't feel like I could. He was the greatest person ever in my life. He treated me better than my dad. How does your dad treat you? Hmm. He's pretty harsh to me. He wants me to be the CEO of the company as well, since it's technically a family business. Ah, he's strict, like my dad. Well, if it ever came to a time where the board had to decide a CEO, I'd gladly give it up for you. I couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. Didn't he want the position? Why? Don't you want to be CEO? To my surprise, Andrew shook his head with a goofy smile. I don't. My dad wants me to take over the Anderson Company, but I really am not sure if I want to or not. Sure, making toys is great and helping people is something I want to do, but I don't know if I want to head the company. Oh. You're not sure what you want to do, just like me. You don't want to be a CEO either? I shook my head. Andrew let out a small laugh. Man, we must be the worst kids on the planet. Our dads want us to take over a company, but we don't even want to. Imagine what would happen if they actually liked each other. <laughs> this is like Romeo and Juliet. Please don't kill yourselves in the end. I couldn't help but laugh. Oh, see? <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh with him. We were in the same boat, yet we were on opposing sides. It was like Romeo versus Juliet. Two families competing for one goal, but the competitors didn't want to even try to reach that goal. Andrew gently stopped laughing and smiled at me. Your grandfather was right about one thing, though. You are really cute. Oh, stop it, you flirt. <laughs> the blush that had faded from my face suddenly returned at his words. I looked away from him, making him laugh again. Sorry, it's true. Cross my heart. He's so cute, stop. It's so 
cheesy and fluffy. I can't take it. <laughs> Thanks. He was flattering me. I had to admit, he was cute, too. But I had only known him a short while. It wasn't realistic to like him more than that. <laughs> Ugh, Louisa, do you see this? <laughs> It wasn't realistic. Come on. You already did that BS with the Incubi. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> Andrew cleared his throat and sat up straight, rubbing the back of his neck. I'll let you have some time with your grandfather. I don't have anywhere to be, so I'll wait by the gates and give you a ride home when you're done. Aw, thank you. It was very sweet of him to wait for me, so I accepted his ride home. Andrew smiled before heading back to the gates. I remained with my grandfather. I'm sure you're laughing where you are, Grandpa. I practically glared at the grave, but after a brief second I smiled. He's a sweet guy, and he's a big fan of yours. Who wouldn't be? You cared for everyone, no matter who they were. I gently ran a finger over one of the lilies in the bouquet. It was soft to touch, but my mind was filled with Andrew for some reason. Was this grandfather's plan? Did he hope for me to meet Andrew as a kindred spirit? I wouldn't be surprised. I chuckled softly before standing. I'll be fine, Grandpa. Andrew's a good guy, but who knows? I shrugged before letting out a sigh and turning back to the cemetery gate where Andrew awaited me. Andrew led me into his car and drove me home. I went to my room and remained there until dinner. Okay, so this is the same old. Um, For this one, I think it might be better if I just walk away. Yeah. All right, we're gonna fight. Uh, that was inter I just saw that uh, no name was there, but that makes sense because, you know, none of the boys told me their secret name. <laughs> I didn't notice that last time. Okay, so... Okay, we know what happens with the whole fighting thing. Ooh, okay, that's scary. Please stop that. So, here again, we're gonna give up the memories, which is very sad, but... That's the only way we could be with Andrew. Oh. A text again? But I'm assuming it's not from Suzu then. Hey, I know you have school today, but do you want to hang out after? Oh, nice. I couldn't help a small smile from growing on my face. Andrew was sweet and seemed like a good guy. I remembered how he gave me his number as he dropped me off at home for my visit to Grandfather's grave, making my small smile bigger. I chuckled and texted back. Uh, sure, why not? I made myself some quick toast and coffee. Felt drained. Okay. Um, alright, so now we don't have Suzu or Naomi here. I mean, they're there, but they're not important right now. I decided to keep my eyes to my notebook. I began to scribble random doodles, some which stuck out more to me more than others. I had somehow managed to doodle a small bear with a heart on its stomach. Aww. I cracked a small smile at the image, imagining the heart lighting up on my paper as I pressed the eraser of my pencil on it. I remember what had happened last week, slowly frowning at the memories of my grandfather. I guess it was still hard to let him go. To lose someone is never easy, but I knew that moping and letting his memory get to me wouldn't do any good. I felt, though, that he was watching over me. As stupid as that may sound, I felt that I was somehow safe, like it was okay to not focus on school or my future and just live in my own little world. I could be a little girl and draw pictures instead of plan out the rest of my life and be perfectly happy. Sadly, I knew that wasn't realistic. Graduation was slowly coming up and my mind had wandered into the future once again. What was I going to do? It was hard to think about. At this rate, I just wanted to wing it. No decisions had to be made ahead of time in my little world. No disappointments would come out of whatever I decided to do in my little world. Hell, maybe I could have found a perfect magical love in my little world and life would just turn out like a dream. Girl, 
No, you're gonna be realistic and you're gonna be with Andrew this time, okay? <laughs> it was sad to think that my world wasn't real, yet my heart still wished that it was. Why does this feel like they're trying to say that, she, oh, she wishes she could have ended up with the Incubi? Come on now. Let her have her ending with Andrew without them interfering, okay? <laughs> it gently squeezed inside my chest, almost convincing me that magic could be real. I do feel kind of bad, though, that she had to lose the memories that her grandfather spoke to her and told her that he learned about magic and all of that. My mind knew better. I let out a small sigh, letting my little world hide away in my thoughts as the class bell rang. Naomi and Suzu smiled at me, making me feel a little better. At least I still had my friends, and apparently Suzu doesn't have the whole issue with her parents going on right now. I quickly gathered my things and left to my next class. Throughout the day, I found myself wondering about my future. What was I going to do? How I was going to do it? Everything. Then Andrew came to mind. He and I were in the same position. We both were in line to take the CEO position, but neither of us wanted it. It was adorable to think about. A strange Romeo and Juliet. Hey, are you listening? Nope. <laughs> I broke out of my thoughts, finding myself in the hall with my things, ready to head home. A bois? <laughs> Dude, you've been spacing out all day. Are you okay? Uh, what's the problem with spacing out? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm fine. As I expected, Naomi and Suzu gave me disapproving looks. What's going on, Anderson? We're just worried about you. It's nothing, really. It's... Before I could continue... Oh, no. I heard Lisette's gaggle of girls giggling nearby. I prepped myself, ready to fight Lisette or deal with another attack from her girl army before turning to the sound. Oh, I felt my face go red at the sight. Oh, he showed up. Nice. <laughs> Andrew was standing in the hall, smiling at me. The girls around him seemed flirtatious, but he only kept his eyes on me. It wasn't like he was holding flowers, but his older looks made him the cutie of the school hall. I will be honest, he was much more handsome than any guy in the school. Andrew, hi. Hey, I was waiting outside for you, but I needed to use the restroom. I hope you don't mind me coming into your school for that, right? <laughs> oh boy, uh, <laughs> her friends are probably like, what? Not at all. I just saw that he has one shirt, like, his shirt's like sticking out a little bit. Oh, you're something else, dude. Andrew smiled at me before gesturing to my friends, who both practically had their jaws hitting the floor. And who are your friends? You didn't meet them at the party? Oh, this is Naomi and Suzu. Pleasure. Yo. They're probably both a little jealous, considering they probably have feelings for her. <laughs> they looked at me, giving me their silent friendship. Oh my god, who is the hot guy and how do you know him look? I glared for half a second at each of them before smiling to Andrew. So, you came to pick me up? Yeah, I figured I could drive you from school to wherever, you know? Save some time and stuff. Unless you don't wanna. No, it's cool. Just give me a couple seconds, alright? For sure. I'll be outside. <sighs> such a bae. Ugh, she's such a lucky girl. <laughs> Andrew smiled and gave a two-fingered salute to me before heading out of the hall. The girls, like a gaggle of morons, followed. As I looked to Naomi and Suzu, they glared at me. What? How did you know that guy? When did you two meet? You've been hogging guys to yourself. Mm? Do you want him or do you want me? What's going on? <laughs> it's not like that, okay? We met at the house party. My mom introduced us and, well, he's kind of nice. Naomi and Suzu were not buying it. <laughs> they raised their eyebrows at me in almost perfect sync. I sighed. Look, we're just friends, and he wanted to hang out, so I said yes, okay? It's just for today. It's nothing, really. Whatever you say, just remember to use rubber. Oh my god, Suzu! Stop that! <laughs> oh, 
You guys! Oh, no. Girl, you want to come at me? Come on, we're going to have a fight this time. <laughs> Before I could defend myself, Lisette strutted up to me, crossing her arms. So, who was that? A college boy? Back off, Lisette. I'm really not in the mood to hear your voice right now, and neither is Anderson. Heck no. I just wanted to know. Can a girl be curious? Be sure. <laughs> be curious, but don't pry. Mm -hmm. I could feel something go sour. Something wasn't right. Why was Lisette approaching us? She wasn't the type to talk to us freely. Oh, boy. I looked around to see a small gaggle of her girls gather. Why do you keep using the term gaggle? It's so weird. Glaring at my friends and me and ready to pounce, I also noticed that Susan, Naomi, and I were cornered. What do you want, Lisette? Well, Anderson, I'm getting a little tired of this game. For years now, we've been at each other's throats. Excuse me? Shut it, Capini. The point is, let's let go of the past, shall we? We're both different people, and we're going to graduate soon. I don't want to graduate with bad blood between us. Hmm. Almost like a cliché chick flick. Chick flick. What did I say? <laughs> Lisette held her hand out to me with a smile. Was she joking? After all we had been through? She plotted... Uh, I think with her girls? Typos. With her girls to tease us. To make us miserable. She was the mastermind behind any operations against me. Years of her trying to undermine me because we both were the top of our classes and she wanted to shake hands? This wasn't like her at all. I rushed my gaze over her, trying to see what was different. Was she just tricking me? Was she being held in some kind of knife point? That's kind of weird. My eyes landed on a small... Oh, I get it. The purple pencil now. I always wonder why I kept seeing it in different endings and stuff. It makes perfect sense. Diana's up to something. <laughs> my eyes landed on a small purple pencil sticking out of her pocket. For some reason, it caught my eye. I knew something was up with it, but it was just a pencil. What could be up with a pencil? Um, hello? I snapped out of my trance and looked up at Lisette, who was glaring at me. Are you going to shake my hand, or what? Fine. I was better than her. Beyond better than her. She didn't deserve my hand, but I gave it anyway. Fine. Let the past be the past. Lisette smiled before stepping back. It was strange, but the smile seemed genuine and complex. Good. Bye, Anderson. Bye, witch. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> And with that, Lisette and her girl groupies left me and my friends alone. I wasn't the only one confused by the whole ordeal. What just happened? Oh, I think she was just possessed by a succubus, that's all. Did Lisette just try to... Be the better person? Yeah. Please don't tell me you forgave her so easily. <laughs> nah, she's... <laughs> oh, Gabe, I love this game. Oh, this is so funny. This is so funny. Um, I mean, I want to say that, but ugh, let's just be responsible, I guess. But she is a bee. She is. Yeah, I did. I needed to let it go. She wanted to move on, and from the looks of it, she wouldn't bother me and my friends anymore. It was time to forgive and forget. I shrugged. Was it a good choice? I believed it was. I continued down the hall with Naomi and Suzu right behind me. So, what about this guy? You're going on a date? It's just hanging out. So, we can come with, right? Uh-oh. No way, Suzu. You have to babysit Francesca, and I have to go to a college interview. Who is Francesca? I turned and smiled at my friends. Is that her little sister? Trust me, I'll be fine. It's just hanging out. I'll text you both when I get home. Like a pair of adorable parents, Naomi and Suzu nodded before heading out, leaving me to head after Andrew. I smiled to see him leaned against his car, waiting. He seemed all right, and luckily he wasn't surrounded by girls. Andrew smiled and waved me over. I rushed over and smiled back. 
Hi. Hi. <laughs> so cute. Like a gentleman, Andrew opened my door for me, gesturing me inside. I stepped inside and sat down before he closed the door and circled to get into the driver's side. We pulled out of the parking lot and began to drive. To where? I didn't know. But I trusted Andrew to stay local since he was just hanging out. Look, I know this seems weird, me picking you up and stuff, but I promise you'll love where we're going. And where are we going exactly? It's a cafe. The Pink Lady Cafe. The best cinnamon rolls around, and their coffee is to die for. Oh, some... <laughs> Please don't fall in love with Suzu. I mean, Naomi, because that's her favorite place. I've actually been there before. <laughs> really? Oh, crap. I thought it would be a surprise. Damn. <laughs> I laughed. He seemed to want to impress me. Why, though? I let the idea slip as we fell back into silence. It was peaceful, but at the same time, I didn't know how to talk to Andrew. Girl, I, I know how that feels. I'm so awkward like that, too. Ugh, especially when you like someone. It's hard. The only thing that connected us was the company and my grandfather. He was funny, sure, but he was still somewhat a stranger. That's the point of dating. You have to get to know people. It's really hard, though. Um. So, how about them bears? This has to be based in Chicago. It has to be. Andrew let out a laugh. I didn't know it was so funny, but seeing him laugh made me laugh a bit, too. I'm a doofus. I don't watch sports. I barely know anything about sports. Neither do I. Well, kind of. Sort of. Not even if you're a Cubs or a Sox fan? Yep, definitely Chicago. Okay. Nice game. Nice. I'm a Cubs fan myself. I'm from the north side. Take a guess. So you have to be a Cubs fan, too? <laughs> Andrew, you my bae. Yes. <laughs> go Cubs! Oh, she said so Cubs. Well, screw you, Mika. You should have said go Cubs. That's right. <laughs> we both laughed again. Chicago sports talk was a silly topic, but it was a start. It was better to chat on the road than listen to the car buzz. You know, my mom always thought I'd go into sports. My dad wrecked that dream of hers real quick when he sent me to college prep. Meh, that was six years ago, though. Oh, wow. You know... <clears throat> okay. Really? How old are you? I'm 20, turning 21 in July. Why? He's not that much older, so it's perfect. Just a little bit older. Yes. And you're in line for the CEO position? So young. Why not? You are too, remember? And suddenly I did remember. I was 18 and being pushed to be CEO. My dad would force me to try and take the position right after I graduate. I sighed at the thought. Did I say something wrong? Ah, serious stuff. No, it's nothing. I saw Andrew's lips pressed together. He was blaming himself. Shoot. I opened my mouth to say something before he smiled. Well, just so you know, I'm the kind of guy that likes to stop the microwave at one second just to feel like I'm defusing a bomb. Pretty cool, huh? I do that too. <laughs> You're just like me. But I do that because the beeping's annoying. I couldn't help but laugh. Where did that come from? Well, you sighed, so I took a risk and tried to make you smile. I got a laugh, so ten bonus points for me. Nice. I, I laughed and smiled at him as he kept his eyes to the road. He also had a smile, though. The same goofy grin he had before. I had to admit, it was cute. However, the car suddenly began to play a song. I watched as Andrew effortlessly moved a hand from the wheel and pressed a button on his dash. His phone was connected to his car? Why is that so surprising that a lot of people do that? Andrew Lewis speaking. Andrew, can you come to the office for a little bit? Your father needs a few folders and he left them here. Uh, they're in the meeting room. Really? Crap. Okay, I'll be there shortly. He pressed the same button on his dash and sighed, slumping his shoulders. Aw. I'm sorry. Can we stop by the Anderson office really fast? It's on the way, and it'll be really quick. Yeah, sure, I guess. He has to work. Andrew nodded before traveling towards the city. I had only seen the building once, but it was the base of operations for the Anderson Toys Company. I never went inside, and I truly wasn't sure if I ever wanted to. I'd have to eventually, but until then, I remained ignorant of how the office looked. There was curiosity, yes, 
excuse me, <clears throat> but I didn't know if I wanted to follow through with it. We pulled into a parking lot of a gigantic office building with the company's name in bold letters at the top. I had to roll down my window and peek my head out to see the top. Yep, still as big as I remembered it. I'll zip in and zip out. It's just to pick up some documents, nothing special. Um, I'll go in too. I want to look around. Huh? Are you sure? Yeah, might as well see the inside after 18 years. I exited the car and closed the door, walking to be at Andrew's side. The building was huge, I had to admit, but I needed to feel the curiosity in my gut. What was it like on the inside? They're not going to show me? I guess they didn't want to have to draw another set uh, background. Andrew and I made our way inside, and he guided me to where he needed to go. All the while, I took in the sight. It was a corporate office, but it had that hint of fun flair with toys in every corner and on every desk. I felt a smile grow on my face at the sight. This was my grandfather's company, all right. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Andrew and I entered the meeting room, where a pile of folders... Uh... Sorry, I got distracted. Where a pile of folders topped with a strangely familiar purple pencil sat neatly on the table. Dang, Diana, why are you interfering with my life so much? <laughs> All right, there they are. Let's get them and... What is going on here? Oh, no. No! This ending's going to take a while, isn't it? You know what? Let's just end this one right here, and we will continue it in the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this, and until next time, have a nice day. Bye!